Hello there, and welcome to Go Engineer's quick tip on thermal analysis and SOLIDWORKS simulation. My name is John Nikoloff. I am an applications engineer here at Go Engineer. And today we're going to be talking about how do we set up thermal analyses, both static and transient. So based on time or based on a solid uh, instant of time. Uh, to quickly go over thermal analyses, there are the three basic thermal energy exchange methods, both conduction, free convection, and forced convection, and radiation, all of these which are supported by SOLIDWORKS simulation. Moving on, since we have thermal conditions that are dependent on mass, these are the different material properties that pertain to the extent at which we can study them. In the thermal analyses, we have both steady state, which is basically converging on an answer based on the snapshot of what happens in a transient analysis will be over time. Moving on into the SOLIDWORKS environment, you can see here that I have a uh, this part of a drone that's going to be basically where the circuitry lives. This is going to be a PCB board and this is where the main connector for power uh, goes to the battery. And here we have the simulation already finished. Not to worry, I am going to walk us through how to do this from scratch. So if we uh, just quickly look right here, we have a thermal contact between uh, the, the circuit board and the component that we are that is in question. We want to understand if this is going to melt the board, depending on how hot this gets. Here we have our heat power, which is being generated by our um, another part in the assembly that I don't have listed here. Reason is so that we can save on computational power. The next two convection coefficients are for the circuit board itself and for the connector part as well. Here I have my thermal analysis open with a bonded global contact keeping everything held together. And to incorporate a thermal resistance between the two faces, uh, between the part that's interacting with the battery and our circuit board, all we have to do is go into connections, right click, go into local interaction, and select the two faces that will have the thermal paste, thermal resistance, or solder. So I'm going to click the top of the circuit board. For the interacting face, I'm going to right click here on the component to select the opposite face where my cursor is. And now I can see that face highlight in orange. That is the correct face I want to select. We'll be able to select a myriad of other faces, but we want to select the top one. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side, since there is a split face. And since this is a thermal resistance, I'm going to input my constant for this, 3e to the negative 6. And now in the local interactions folder, we have confirmed that we have a thermal resistance between those two faces, highlighted in blue and purple. Next, thermal loads. Uh, we have options for just temperature, as if there is just temperature being emitted onto this part, convection constant, heat flux flowing from or to one part, heat power, and then radiation. So I'm going to first go on heat power. We're going to say that this connector somehow is emitting 5 watts of heat. And uh, you can note that we ha don't have to just select the faces. We can select a whole part here. So I'm going to open up our pull down menu, go into the solid bodies folder here. And select the USB import. And this will have five watts. Next, we are going to define some convection coefficients. This is also in the thermal loads option under convection. First, I am going to select the face of the circuit board. This convection coefficient is going to be 80. And starting temperature is going to be 298 Kelvin. We'll do the same thing for all the faces of the connector piece. But this will be 25 watts per meter Kelvin. 
meters squared Kelvin, excuse me, and we'll start at 298 Kelvin. And this part I will fast forward through. All right, once we have selected all those faces, we'll click OK. And we will run our analysis. Once our analysis has finished being run, I'm going to change some of these values so that we can at least uh, see what the temperature distribution is around this part. So I'm going to change the uh, bottom value here just by clicking on the number and typing in 392. All right, and we are able to see what the thermal energy exchange is like once the USB port has a little bit of temperature interfacing with the rest of the part. Now from here, say we wanted to incorporate this into a thermal transient analysis. Uh, one thing we can do is start a whole new study and define the transient mode in the properties menu from steady state to transient. But if we wanted to keep the results in our thermal analysis, or we wanted to run the thermal analysis as a stress analysis, uh, we could do that with just this study. And what we can do is copy our study call it thermal transient. And now we will have an independent study from our original thermal analysis. And we can now specify this to be a transient analysis. And say we want to put this under our thermal load for, let's say, three minutes. We'll put our time division uh, every 30 seconds. So we don't clutter up the solver with a lot of data. We don't need too many data points. We just need enough to get us to where we're going. Call that good. Now an option that will open up. If we open up the heat power option, you may have caught this earlier, but we have these time curves that we can use now. So now we can say, well, the temperature being deposited into this port, it's not constant. We can have a time curve to say, oh, it's emitting this five watts over this amount of time, or we can say it's emitting this amount of temperature over the entire time duration of our transient analysis. We're gonna assume the former, edit the transient option, and here we'll be able to change the time of which our part will undergo its thermal load of heat power. So we can say that in the first second, we can also change these. Uh, we can say that over uh, the course of 360 seconds, we can just double click here. The next time step, we can say maybe it's only being powered on a pulse. Uh, maybe for this example, uh, we're just gonna say that eventually when it gets to 10 seconds, It'll start ramping down. And at 30 seconds, it'll ramp back up. And these are just values that I'm using for example. These obviously would be uh, very specific towards someone's analysis. Of course, this is nice to know in case you have different conditions under which your your part is undergoing different voltages over over time. This is somewhere you can input that data, those data points. Before we run our analysis, we do need to specify the initial temperature of our study. And since we defined that in the thermal test analysis, we can recall that in our transient analysis by selecting the initial temperatures from thermal study going down to thermal test. Now we'll be importing the initial conditions of the thermal test to our transient analysis, giving us a start point so we can solve towards our end point, which would be our uh, constants that we defined here. Fantastic, now that we have our results, we have the temperature plot still representing the scale that we defined earlier. And now we can see that this is, has a little bit better definition of how the thermal energy was applied to the part.
From here, since we have a spread of data that is over time, what we can do is going into the results of our temperature plot. We can load particular time steps in our analysis. So this is the first time step at 30 seconds. If you wanted to see what would happen, let's see here. I guess it would be going up to 12 steps total, right? So we can see what happened at step eight, 240 seconds into our analysis. See the results change. And this is where we had the temperature uh, dissipating. So the temperature was not uh, at full effect. Uh, well, I guess there wasn't as much thermal energy at this port. And we can see how the temperature distributes through the rest of the part. And luckily, this is keeping within uh, below 400 degrees. So that's a good for this design. Again, we can go back, go forward and back in time in our analysis and see what happened just before this at 210 seconds. Not much, too, not too much of a difference. And let's go forward in time to see what the thermal energy was doing after uh, our eighth time step. So we'll go to nine, 270 seconds. And there we go. We have reapplied some of the thermal conditions to that part. And that concludes this quick tip with the thermal analysis. We have covered a transient analysis and a steady state analysis. Uh, for further content, the next thing would do would to be loading the thermal conditions into a stress analysis. So if there is demand for that, please just let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Again, my name is John Nikoloff, and if you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. And if you would like to be notified on when we upload new content to our YouTube channel, please hit that subscribe button. And until then, thanks for tuning in to Go Engineers Quick Tip, your number one resource for SolidWorks engineering and CAD, CFD, and FEA analyses. Thank you.